a Jewish state at the expense of the Native American inhabitants. And this is how it works. It's a system of segregation. So, and it, and it give, we give thousands of examples. The most obvious example, I was in Palestine in July, part of the Welcome to Palestine uh, group. So, long story about that. But I observed some things going on. The main checkpoint between Bethlehem and Jerusalem, Bethlehem and Jerusalem are seven miles apart, but are separated by a giant wall. Almost everywhere, except one place where the highway comes through. The highway comes through because settlers who were stealing the Palestinian lands, Jewish settlers, they want to have, they live like they're part of Israel, and they want to come back and forth without impediment. So at the checkpoint, what happens? Settler buses, they go right through. Settler cars with the yellow license plates, they go right through. But of course, some Palestinians, especially Israeli Palestinians, have yellow tags like the Israelis do. So how do the Israeli Border Patrol find out who they need to stop and who they don't need to stop? They do racial profiles. And they see, do you look, are you wearing the different the clothes? Are you, how's your, what's the color of your skin? How are you acting? It is a system of explicit racial profiling, which of course has very little to do with security because it's not hard for someone to act like a different race and go through, but to the extent there is race, but this is this is what happens. Now you look at Ben Gurion International Airport, they have what's a lot of people call an Arab airport, because it's if you're a Palestinian, if you're an Arab, you have a Muslim name, you go through that airport, you will be interrogated for often up to five hours. They try to plan it so you just get on your flight at the right time. And it's a humiliating process, often, of strip searching. So th this is what happens. It's methods of racial profiling. Well, the Boston Logan International Airport is now utilizing the behavior detention officer's technique of profiling people for danger that was developed at Ben Gurion Airport. Uh, it's been going on two years. They haven't found a single potential terrorist yet. Uh, but there's plans to expand it to other airports. Uh, taking the, 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 the explicitly racist systems that were used in Ben Gurion and saying what we're bringing into the United States. Uh, another example, you look at new, very few people have jumped aboard this process of collaboration with the Israelis as much as New York City Police Commissioner Ray Kelly. He's now visited Israel at least two times in the last two years, last three years. The first time he went there in 2009, in January, as the massacre and bombing of Gaza was going on, to show a solidarity with Israel as they were committing a uh, process of mass murder. Uh, about 1,400 people were killed, and the entire society made to rubble uh, people who were trapped in Gaza. Uh, he's now set up a permanent tax funded NYPD liaison officer in Tel Aviv. And Kelly's set up a what they call demogra demographics unit to spy on and monitor Muslim communities in New York, visiting mosques, bookstores, and other locations. And a former police official has told AP that the demographics unit is a map of the city's human terrain through a program modeled in part on how Israeli authorities operate in the West Bank. Now, nothing in the United States should be modeled on how things are done in the United States. That, that's a system of, of occupation where one race dominates another. But this is in New York City. They have a program that they've said is, is modeled on uh, operations in the West Bank. And of course, another thing you would expect to be brought and trained is how do you humiliate people in the submission? Uh, there was a recent story in the, it got some attention. The New York Times reporter who was reporting in Gaza crossed into Israel. Very few people crossed there. It's, checkpoint now because Gaza's almost exclusively blocked off, but she was a reporter. She came in, she's a pregnant woman. She said she didn't want to go through the x-ray. They made her walk back and forth the x-ray three times as they mocked her. She said, I've been to 60 countries all over the world. I've never been treated so cruelly in my life. Uh, it was it was even put in the, it was put in the New York Times because it was their own reporter. Uh, it seems like, why would people do this? This seems just gratuitous. I can tell you what, the first time I ever went to Israel and Palestine in 1999 was going through a crossing through the, uh, the Egyptian-Israeli border near Gaza. 
and there were these Japanese tourists in front of me. I don't know why. They were, this was 99, so people still use film. Right before the whole digital camera thing. So they'd been traveling around the world. They had all this film. And the, um, they said, please don't put the film in the x-ray machine because we're afraid it's going to hurt. They said, it's not going to hurt it. But, like, well, we'd still like it if you didn't put it. And so the, the Border Patrol, they saw this, like, it's not going to hurt it. Like, well, don't do it anyways. Okay, I can understand if you're fed up and you just put it through the scanner. They back, back and forth through the x-ray 22 times. Why? Just because they were pissed off. I mean, th this is, makes me think, okay, it doesn't surprise me that they made this New York Times report go back for us because it wasn't a baby who was filmed, which probably had the same set of values. These tourists were really into their film. Uh, they, they, why would you do that to people? But this is, this is the, the security forces that operate in Israel. What, why would they be training Americans on how to operate? And, uh, uh, probably the third, third thing that I would see that you would expect to be trained would be use of military tactics when policing is called for. Uh, ideally, we probably have different ideas on what policing should be done to the extent there should be police forces, but ideally if policing keeps peace, keeps legitimate walls upheld, and um, is a type of community policing the other style of policing is with an us against them mentality, uh, where civilians, especially political activists, are seen as the enemy. That's how it is in Israel. Any Palestinian engages in political action is seen as a threat. Every action is uh, justified in terms of security. So you can go by, if you ask an Israeli official, there's cell an area right by Jerusalem, 2,000 olive trees just cut down. This is common mm -hmm. thing, you just destroy people's olive trees. Yes, why was that done? Security. I guess the owls were all shooting. <laughs> it was justified in security. You go to, I was at a protest in Nabi Salman's, where they're really cracking down. People's wells were stolen by fanatic religious Jewish settlers. And they go on a demonstration every week. And they're met with brute force, peaceful demonstration. Uh, shooting, breaking people's windows, shooting tear gas into buildings. Several babies have died from asphyxiation of tear gas. This is the methodology. Protest, political action is seen as a threat, has to be crushed. Um, you've got, in 2006, Avi Dikta, who's the former head of Israel's notorious, notorious Shin Bet security service, a man who's responsible for many human rights abuses, including bombings in densely populated civilian areas of Gaza in 2009. In 2006, he spoke before the annual convention of the International Association of Chiefs of Police in the United States. Uh, sitting beside FBI Director Robert Mueller and Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez, he told 10,000 police officers that there was an intimate connection between fighting criminals and fighting terrorists. He told the police officers that they were actually fighting criminal terrorists, in which case they stood up and applauded. They liked the idea they're fighting criminal terrorists. This is, this is a mentality. This is the opposite of what community policing should be, the model of occupation. The population is a threat. Criminals, terrorists, subversives, activists, they're all in the same pot. They're a threat that must be taken out of heart and made to see who's lost. And it's something to think about, and Sandra will probably talk about this. No, she's going to talk about this more. When you look in the context of the crackdown on the Occupy movement that's been going on recently. And of course, none, none of the things I've talked about are uniquely Israeli. Uh, American police have done these kind of things for a long time. But it's, it's you look at it, the war on terrorism, and the prestige of Israeli military and the idea that they're the toughest. Uh, you wouldn't have, um, you wouldn't have, say, Bull Connor come and give a training now to a major police force. You wouldn't have the head of apartheid South African security give a training on how to do proper policing because they were so tough on Nelson Mandela and the ANC. But you've got a force who was basically Jim Crow, Apartheid in South Africa, uh, Israeli apartheid, a lot of similarities in these systems, these explicitly racial systems. And the people who are upholding the one that exists now are all over training our police forces. And it's it's a broader sense of part of that. How much time do I have? A little bit. Just want to bring up this is a little bit off track, but I think of kind of the, the mentality, and it's part of how. We, Things are done in, in, in the media and in Hollywood. I don't know how many people seen the movie Date Night. 
he was rushed to a, a hospital in Tel Aviv. If he had been Palestinian, he would have gone to the hospital in Ramallah, and because they don't have the equipment, he would have died immediately. But he went to Tel Aviv. He spent uh, four months in the hospital there. He had to be at his side every day. Um, he was finally able to come back to Oakland. Um, he's lost short-term memory. He's still learning to speak. Um, he's partly paralyzed. Um, Gabby is still with him and trying to help his parents through his recovery. Um, but his uh, story is back in the news now because his family has filed a civil uh, lawsuit against the Israeli military and trying to get um, some compensation. Um, Gabby, in a, in a recent interview, said Palestinians don't have the ability to try these kinds of cases. Um, at least 59 people in the last several years have been killed at these demonstrations along the village routes. Um, so the Palestinian names you will not hear, but we're bringing Tristan to you because he has a connection to Oakland and he has a connection to Tristan and the way that they were injured is exactly the same. Um, we, go, we go then to Jamestown, Jamestown Pennsylvania. Um, Jamestown, Pennsylvania is uh, the headquarters of Combined Systems Incorporated. This is a company that manufactures these tear gas canisters. These are not just tear gas um, canisters that we, we've encountered. I don't know if anyone's been hit by tear gas. It's not fun with experience. <laughs> but, um, you know, the canisters are uh, developed to um, be able to, um, be, able to be um, shot out of these uh, guns at high velocity. And they're being, um, they're being marketed and they're being sold to our police departments as well. Um, what's really interesting about this particular company is that in Jamestown, I wish I had a projector I could show you, um, an Israeli flag flies outside of the headquarters. Um, we sent our tax dollars, we sent $3 billion of uh, aid to Israeli cheer. Um, that aid goes into military contracts primarily. We're supplying the weapons. It goes, you know, these, these companies, then it's circular. Um, it is a smart, you know, businessman, smart businessman in Israel is going to want to be part of that, you know, that circle of money. That's a lot of money to be had. So there, there's an obviously a connection between this tear gas company and Israeli business um, that they're cashing in on this security, security industry. Um, there are um, NASDAQ, which is the security, which is the high tech, you know, um, Wall Street kind of thing to handle uh, stocks for high tech uh, companies. Um, so the U.S. has the most companies on that uh, on that uh, board. Um, right after the, the U.S., Canada comes in. Who, who, what kind of country has the has the third most companies on the Nasdaq? We'll go with Israel. It's Israel, and those companies are um, you know not agricultural companies, not environmental. Companies, not, um, you know, clean energy, the way Israel likes to paint itself as a green, green state developing all this, you know, clean technology. It's security. So we are, you know, in, we are contracting with Israel to provide us with uh, expertise on uh, how to handle security threats. So coming back to um, St. Louis, uh, Timothy Fish is the St. Louis County Police Chief. And in uh, April of this year, he went on a week-long training to Israel. Um, he came back saying, um, it was very complicated. There are lots of walls and checkpoints. Um, it's very different than in the U.S. We don't use racial profiling. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> we only spend $7 um, per person on uh, security, where in Israel they spend $75 uh, per person per year on security. Um, and he said, you know, what we learned is about, um, you know, how to detonate bombs and whatnot. Um, one of the things I know that they're teaching in these things, too, is that you shoot at the head when you have a suspect, rather than at the chest. And why would they teach them that? Because in Israel, the idea is that if you shoot at the chest, you may be detonating um, a suicide bomber's path. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these are the kinds of things that um, our police chiefs are learning in this room. Um, here in St. Louis, there is a crazy organization called the Combat Institute. 
and they'll teach your children, <laughs> very young children, how to do martial arts, uh, Israeli style. Um, proud manga, yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, if you look at the first thing you see when you open up their website is a gun pointing at you, and their motto is doing bad things to bad people. So um, they're very proud if you go to their client list, they list St. Louis Police, St. Louis County Police, Fire Department, CIA, FBI. Um, this is happening here in our city. Can I just add one thing to this? It's also in St. Louis charter schools. They have clubs, after school clubs, that teach Israeli martial arts. Yeah, I know because my grandsons go to the Gateway to Science Academy, and it is part of, it is one of their after school uh, activities. Uh, and it's a very interesting because the principal and vice principal of that school are Muslims. And it's, it's a very, it's a diverse school. And I, I'm so glad you're telling me this. I had no idea. What are the Israeli martial arts called? Prague or Praga. It's A R A B and then M A G A. So I think, you know, we have a lot more research to do in our organization to find out what's, what the police are learning in these okay. sessions, um, how much money these contracts are worth. Um, so we're just beginning to uncover it. Max Blumenthal um, has been writing about this in, uh, the, in the, Arabic, the Arabic English language press. Um, it's just now starting to get um, discussed because we're seeing how the Occupy movement is being crushed very violently. It's not new. I mean, sure, we've had Kent State, we've had Rodney King. We know that the police are brutal. They can be very brutal. But this kind of militarization of the police high-velocity tear canisters, these, um, the large, um, you've heard of the LRAD uh, loudspeakers that they're using to, to disperse crowds. I mean, this is awful stuff. This is torture to crowds. Um, the, the kind of stink, um, I mean, this is a new technology. This, the stink um, smells that they send out, the scum, it, it just lasts on your body. You can't get it off of you for weeks at a time. Um, the Israelis are using this in villages where it, you know, they, they, they spray the skunk um, scent through the village and then the houses are, are uninhabitable. Um, this is all being, you know, produced here in this country, sold to Israel, tested there, um, used there. It, I mean, you just have to wonder when, when is this stuff going to end up back here?